So let's compare a T-Rex to a blue whale. A T-Rex is really heavy, 7 tons. That's 7,000 kilograms. But a blue whale is crazy, 200 tons. That's 200,000 kilograms. So let's compare the two using a ratio. The ratio of whale to T-Rex is 200 to 7. Now, what does that look like? Yes, it's clear that the whale is much bigger than the T-Rex, but how much bigger? For that, we can use something called a unit ratio. Now, to find a unit ratio, the way to do it is to turn one of these sides into the number one by dividing it by itself. So, in this case, 200 is to 7. I'm going to divide both sides by 7. 200 divided by 7 is to 7 over 7. Now that gives me 7 over 7 on this side, that's 1. That's why it's called a unit ratio, single unit, 1. 200 over 7, might need a calculator. 28.57. Now this is a really useful ratio because it gives us a clear understanding of the relationship between a T-Rex and a blue whale. It says that a blue whale is 28.57 times as large as a T-Rex. You could fit 28.57 T-Rexes inside of a blue whale. Yeah. All right, so there's what that ratio says. Now, this is a unit ratio. Something is to one. And we could have written this unit ratio in reverse if we wanted to. This time I'm going to find the unit ratio of T-Rex to whale. Alright, so T-Rex is 7 and whale is 200. Now, this time I'm going to divide both sides by 200. Uh, 200 over 200. Now when I do that, this bit, I'll get back to that in a second, this bit, 200 over 200, is 1. I'm going to need a calculator for that. Uh, it's 0 0.035. Now, how do we interpret this result? Well, 0 0.035 is to 1 is the ratio of T-Rex to whale. Still not making a lot of sense in my head. What about if I think in terms of percentages? This says that a T-Rex is 3.5% the size of a whale. As you can see, unit ratios are really good for making comparisons between two objects. But they're also really useful for finding something called the scale factor. So a scale factor is the number you need to multiply a thing by to get another thing. That's a really loose definition. It's better if you see how it works. Let's use our unit ratio here between uh, the whale and the T-Rex. If you have a ratio like this, 28.57 is to 1, this number here is called your scale factor. Now, in this example, this ratio is whale to T-Rex. And the scale factor is the number you would need to multiply the T-Rex by to make a T-Rex as big as a whale. We can think of it also as an enlargement factor in this case, because we're enlarging our T-Rex to make it as large as our whale. But it also has some more useful things, because you're not a mad scientist. So here's our question. Uh, the ratio of flour to sugar in some recipe is 4 is to 1. Okay, if you use 5 cups of sugar, how much flour should you use? This is a really good example of the use of a scale factor. This is our scale factor, 4. Sugar is the number 1, flour is the number 4. So if we're using 5 cups of sugar, we then scale up by 4, scale that number up by 4 to find out how much flour we would need. So the flour required is equal to the scale factor times the number of our unit that we're using. So 4 times 5, which is 20. So we need 20 cups of flour. Now there is an alternative method to solving this exact same question that I think I like a little bit better. We know that the ratio of flour to sugar is 4 to 1. Right? But we're making a bigger recipe than 4 cups to 1 cup. We're making a recipe that is, um, we don't know how much flour, so I can just use the letter F here, is to, but we do know we're using 5 cups of sugar. 4 is to 1 is equal to F is to 5, and we just need to find out what F is. Now that looks a little bit difficult, but once we write it as fractions, 4 over 1, F 
over 5, we can start to use a little bit of algebra to figure out what f is. Now, if we want to get f by itself, we multiply both sides by 5. We get 4 over 1 times 5 equals f, which means that f equals 20, which is the same answer that we got up here. I really like this alternative method because there's one more little question I want to show you where this method is probably a little bit easier to understand than this method. And here's my last question. Now we're continuing on with this. We've still got a ratio of flour to sugar is 4 is to 1. If you use 7 cups of flour this time, so flour is this number here, how much sugar should you use? Now, we're going to use our alternative method here because it works really nicely for this. So we know that the ratio is 4 is to 1. And we know that we're going to use 7 cups of flour, which is our first number. The thing we don't know is how much sugar we're going to use. So 4 is to 1 is equal to 7 is to S. Now this gets a lot easier if we write it as a fraction. 4 over 1 equals 7 over S. But we do need to do a little bit of work here. If we multiply both sides by S first, we can get S up to the top. So multiplying this side by S will remove S entirely and we'll just get the number 7. And multiplying this side by s will give us 4s over 1. But over 1 just means 4s. 4s divided by 1 is 4s. So we can get rid of that divide by 1. Now that I've got that, I just do a little more algebra here. And if I divide both sides by 4, I'll have that s all by itself. So what does this say? It says you should use 7 fourths of a cup of sugar if you're using seven cups of flour. You might find it easier to see that in terms of a decimal. So that's going to be 1.75. If you type that into your calculator, that's what you'll get. You could also see it as a mixed number. It's going to be one and three quarter cups of um, sugar, which is the sort of thing that you might see in a recipe book somewhere. All right, covered a lot here. There's unit ratios, there's scale factors, and a little bit of algebra here in the end.